Welcome to Evo's roundup of the Paris Motor Show 2016. Now, there have been a few manufacturers that aren't here. Volvo's not here, Ford's not here. I'm standing where there should be some sort of Lamborghini wild concept and Bentley should be just over there. However, there's still an awful lot of this show, including some very cool film cars, so stick around for those. So we'll take you through all the other weird and wonderful and perhaps just slightly more mundane stuff that we haven't had time for in the other videos. The big news on the Porsche stand is this. It's the Panamera 4 e-hybrid. Now, some of the facts and figures for you, so it's got 456 brake horsepower and it's got 516 pounds foot of torque. It'll do 174 miles an hour and not 62 miles an hour in 4.6 seconds. It'll also, when you start it up, completely electric, nice and silent, and it can run on that for up to 31 miles and up to 87 miles an hour, which is pretty impressive. The MPG figure, for what it's worth on the combined system, is 113 MPG, which is, yeah, is very impressive. However, I think the important thing is that Porsche is actually saying this car, well, it's, it's performance. The hybrid should be performance enhancing. Yes, it has the green credentials, but they want it to be performance enhancing. It's four-wheel drive, unlike the previous one, which was, was rear-wheel drive only, and it now has PDK instead of Tiptronic, so that's, well, yeah, that is a good thing. The other thing is, well, apparently there's actually going to be a, a a more, a more performance orientated hybrid version in the Panamera range. We're only seeing this is the beginnings of the Panamera range. And currently this is actually the cheapest Panamera you can buy, which is, is also quite intriguing. So there we go. The big white Panamera 4E hybrid. The prize for the brightest car at the show goes to this. Skoda Kodiak, complete with cat on the bonnet. It's like a Jaguar, but, but not. It's a bit like birch green, actually, if you know your Porsche colours. There we go. Anyway, this is the brand new Land Rover Discovery. Uh, looks very much like the sort of a bigger brother of the Discovery Sport, as you would expect. Uh, still got that slightly, it's got the, the offset rear number plate, like the old Discovery, except this time it's not quite so obvious why. Um, it's up to 480 kilos lighter. Presumably that will be the one with the Ingenium engine in yeah. it. It's obviously a lot of aluminium construction. I'm sure it will be very popular. I, I, they do all, one thing they do is um, you can now get what they call the activity key. So that's like a key, it's like a wristband, it's like one of these wristbands that you can wear. You can lock the normal key, say, in there, in the side of the car, and then go off and do your mountain biking or kayaking or whatever it is. And um, yeah, this activity key works like a, a normal key, which is quite cool. Having said that, I'd, I'd like to see a sort of as a hose down interior or something. So, you know, it's, it's a discovery. I don't want it to be like a Range Rover. I want it to be sort of all active and stuff. I'm sure you can get that. We obviously did a video on the AMG models yesterday. And the reason the rose has been kept away is to not take any of the shine away from this, which was unveiled later. And it's the Generation EQ concept on the Mercedes stand. So this foreshadows an EQ sub-brand for Mercedes, which will be there. So I suppose, well, their electric generation. It's their next whole new generation of cars for them. Uh, this is 300 kilowatts, all-wheel drive, uh, 516 pounds for the torque, not to 62 miles an hour in around about sort of five seconds, probably just under five seconds, I think. And that's clearly enough to sort of take on uh, Tesla. Range is going to be over 300 miles as well, apparently. It's all very sort of clean and slick inside. There's obviously elements of autonomous driving as well, which we've seen on lots of cars at the show. It's, uh, yeah, I, I like the design of it. I love the, the hidden sort of uh, windscreen wipers and the hidden door handles and things like that. So it really does look clean and sort of fresh despite being a familiar sort of shape, I suppose. And um, yeah, it'll be interesting. This, this really does feel like a proper, it's not just a concept car. I think we will see lots from Mercedes on this sort of platform, different sorts of cars on an electric platform over the next few years. And of course, don't forget to go and have a look at the other Mercedes film we did with the Maybach and the uh, AMG GT Roadster as well. Very cool. Click on a link somewhere, you know, you'll find it. This is VW's ID concept. It's an uh, electric car and it's going to have a certain amount of autonomy about it to the extent that the steering wheel will actually retract into the dashboard and they've designed the interior, open space interior around that very thing. But it's a car that drives itself and the steering wheel disappears. What are you going to say about steering? It's just not Evo, is it? It's not Evo. If you're going to do a tie up with somebody, then, um, well, there's nobody cooler than Reva, really, partly because it means you get to put one of their boats on your stand, which is what Fiat has done. This is the Fiat 500 Cinquecento Riva, which has got, well, mahogany and chrome and probably a poop deck somewhere. I don't know. I mean, it's a Fiat 500 with wood in it. I mean, what more do you want me to say? <laughs>
I'd like one of the boats though. Because I just thought, you know, if you can't buy a 917, or Crow GT actually for that matter, next best thing, clearly. Wooden gear knob. On the Nissan stand, well, normally we'd be looking at GTR, but this is the new Micro. And I think it looks really very good. I, I haven't seen a Micro that looks this sort of almost edgy, isn't it? Sort of, it's, yeah, it's just a good looking thing. You've got lots of different colours here. And I can certainly imagine sort of a, a hot version of this might actually be really quite, yeah, quite appealing. Small, perfectly formed. Perhaps not perfectly, but you know, it's well formed. This is the Kia stand, which I have to say is actually our cameraman Sam's favourite stand at the entire show. And this is the car he's really excited about. It's the Rio, which, well, what's not to get excited about, to be honest? It's, it's a Kia Rio. And, um, it's, that's Rio, that's where the Olympics were held earlier this year. And it's, it's really quite red. Hopefully there might be a GT version because we like the Kia Seed GT. So yes, that's, that's Sam's favorite stand at the Paris Motor Show this year. So we'll move on over here. Right, I thought this bike had fallen over, but it's just so you can show sort of lean angle. There's an Ignis on the Suzuki stand as well. I like the Ignis. Um, I don't really like this position, not since Ruben Zaus was gone a Spider-Man was on a bike and someone so lanky tried to do this. Jeepers. I obviously I corner my bicycle like this as well. Um, I mean if if Batman was really poor and couldn't afford black paint, then I love it. I mean I love that somebody's I I don't even know what I don't I don't even know what it is, but fair play, I mean it's it's like a a weird dream that's somehow come to life. Takes the biscuit. Okay, I, I just, yeah, I, I wasn't gonna say, but the more I look at this, the more, this, that looks like something off a of chaparral, appears to be a sunshade. I, I don't, it does 0 to 62 miles an hour in 10 seconds apparently, so this is not an aerodynamic aid, I don't think, it's, it's a sunshade. This stripy little number is the mini John Cooper Works Clubman, all four. Not all four, apparently that sounded like the first time I tried this. All four, not all four. And it's got 228 brake horsepower. And I've, I've seen quite a lot of Clubmans around actually, so they're obviously very popular. I actually drove uh, the launch version of the all four, the standard all four, and it was surprisingly good fun actually. I, I hadn't expected to enjoy it, and it has nicely supported suspension, so yeah, I think this could be quite appealing. I'm standing on a Travelator at the Paris Motor Show 2016 and therefore the urge to do some sort of Gladiator tribute is strong. However, we're off to Hall 8 where hopefully we're going to find a whole load of film cars. This is the um, Aston Martin DBS from Quantum of Solace, which I think I'm right in saying Mark Higgins was actually driving as they did that amazing opening scene, sort of driving down the gravel road through the quarry and stuff. Suitably beaten up, well used, polish out probably. This is obviously the Aston Martin DB10 from the latest Spectre film. And um, up here though, it's a Deux from For Your Eyes Only, or Rien Que Pour Vos Yeux, apparently in French. And it's actually, if you go back and have a look at this, I love the car chase in this. It's just, it's brilliant. It's Roger Moore and it's, it's hilarious. So yeah, go and have a look at that. You've got to love sticker bullet holes. I mean, that's just priceless. As you can imagine, there are quite a few Citroen DSs in uh, this, including this one from 1964. Many years ago, I actually went to the very, very first showing out of Pixar Studios of Cars the Movie. I always thought it was very odd, though. They didn't use headlights as eyes. They painted them on the screen. It seemed odd, but there we go. Onwards. It's Ecto-1. I mean, quite seriously, who are you going to call? I actually want one of those rucksacks. I, I, I want one of the backpacks. Probably me even more than this. Is that sacrilege? No. Nah. What do you say about this? I mean, the temptation to go and hit 88 miles an hour on the periphery is strong. I mean, it's quite hard to see, which is appropriate for Kit, but um, the interior is just, that's amazing. Some of these cars are quite sort of uh, beaten up, like the um, DeLorean, I suppose, but the interior of that just looks fresh as a daisy. It's better than half the cars in the sort of main hall. It looks more futuristic still. So we think, or rather Sam thinks, that um, this isn't actually the one that outran the T-Rex, but it's rather the one Dennis Nedry, uh, who was a, a larger gentleman, who then had the little one that looks like a dragon and got sort of, well, killed by that. So we think that's this, this Jeep Wrangler is that one from Jurassic Park. It's very cool. 
They did actually. They did actually outrun the T Rex in it, didn't they? Yeah, of course they did. And so, see all that effort, you could just bolt on a GoPro. Behind me is the BMW X2 concept. It's um, well, it's based on the X1 platform, and it shows some design language, and there'll be something like it in 2018, apparently. I can't say I'm terribly excited. All oh, the grill, though, that. Um, that prefigures the new sort of look for the kidney grill, wider at the bottom, narrower at the top, apparently. I'm not entirely sure they should have messed with it. So, in the same way that the Germans tend to dominate the Frankfurt Motor Show, it's the French that dominate the Paris Motor Show, as you would expect. And we're on the Citroën stand, which has to be probably the biggest of them all, and they've launched the C3, which is quite a nice looking little thing with sort of elements of the cactus in there. What we're interested in, of course, is the WRC version. This is still a concept, so I imagine sort of kind of, it, although it's the overall shape and you can see there's, there's much more aero and the big box arches and stuff, some of the detail stuff I imagine they're still keeping hidden because they don't want their rivals coming and snooping over it before the season has even begun. As you can see, Chris Meek's name is on the side and hopefully he'll be adding to this wall of champions that's up here and face bearing up on the um, front page of L'Equipe or back page of L'Equipe in the not too distant future. Yeah, it should be an exciting season. And there is one more WRC car here as well. So we're gonna have a look at that now. Still very much in its camouflage livery is this, the Hyundai offering for the 2017 WRC. And as you can see, the aero isn't really, it's not very sort of finalized. It's just a sort of, you know, guess what, with the wider arches and stuff like that. And the interior doesn't exactly look terribly finished either. We know they've got Sordo and Hayden Padden and potentially Thierry Neuville, although where he's going is still slightly up in the air. But yeah. There is, however, one other WRC car here that has all its aero kind of in, well, slightly more ready state, extraordinarily so. So we're gonna have a look at that. It's the new Toyota Yaris WRC, which has been developed by Tommy Mackinnon, and it looks, well, it's pretty wild. I think you'll agree. All the aero on it is really visible on this car and the, the cutouts of the arches and stuff like that. Looks very cool. We've got Yuho Hananen and Jan Kopecky uh, will be, no, it's not Yuso Pecky Lappi, who's um, running this car next year. And, it could be quite a force to be reckoned with, I think. It's going to be quite twitchy with such a short wheelbase, but yeah, very, very cool. So that's the Paris Motor Show done for another year, or another two years, it's every other year, isn't it? But we finish up next to the 2017 Carrera Cup car, which is very nice. Remember to leave his comments in the boxes below, and on Twitter and Facebook and all that sort of thing, and let us know if we missed something, or check the other videos just in case we haven't. There we go. I can't, give it, I can't take something that's a sunshade masquerading as a, a rear wing. I'm like, it's not getting a thumbs up, I'm sorry. No, no, weird as it is. No, <laughs> no. <laughs>